So it's been two years since I last did a review of these Ego lawn tools, which means I've had the mower now for three years and I've had the blower and the trimmer now for two years. So the question is, am I still an Ego fanboy? Let's find out. So now that it's been two years since I did that last video, the question is, what, what issues have I had or have I even had any issues? And the short answer to that is, yes, I've had a couple of issues, but they've been fairly minor. So let's talk about what those are. And we're also gonna talk about batteries here in a minute because uh, it does seem like in the last two videos that I've done, one obviously being specifically about a battery problem, most of the comments that I've gotten have been either expressing battery concerns, uh, curiosity about the batteries, how long they last and all that sort of thing and also maybe some just expressing some fairly strong opinions about, about the batteries. So I'm gonna get into some of that and we'll go kind of look at my current battery situation if you wanna call it that. And again, this is actually just like the last video I did on this, uh, unsponsored, and I'll say mostly unsponsored because there is one aspect of sponsorship that I'm gonna talk about and probably not in the way that you expect. So stay tuned for that. All right, so aside from the battery issue, uh, the only really other issue that I had with the mower was almost exactly two years into the mower uh, life, I had a problem with the switch here. The, this is the, the little engagement switch that you have to press before you pull the safety handle in order to start the mower. That switch broke on me and I had to take it to an authorized service center here nearby. Turns out there's one only four or five miles away. Um, it did take about three weeks to get my mower back, which was a little inconvenient, but Actually, the, I think the, the turnaround time had a lot more to do with that particular service center's uh, backlog than it had to do with you know, getting repair parts. I've heard that parts and batteries and accessories and things like that might be uh, a little bit difficult to come by, at least on short notice right now, because of those supply chain issues. But you know, we'll see if that continues or not. But with both issues that I had, the battery issue and the starter issue, both were completely covered under warranty and Ego handled them without really any problem at all. And I will stress too that it's really important if you jump into this Ego system, especially with Ego, you definitely wanna make sure that you register your tools online with them, including the batteries, chargers, if they come with chargers, all of these have serial numbers and you wanna register those with uh, Ego on their website, including taking a picture and uploading a picture of the receipt because that's gonna spare you the, the hassle of getting Ego to honor the warranty, which they will do as long as you've properly registered the tools, at least in my experience. I've run some close-up footage of the tools here and I purposely didn't clean them up and make them look nice again because I wanted you to see that these are actually pretty well used tools. I, I don't clean them regularly. In fact, I have never cleaned the trimmer uh, and I've only just recently cleaned out the cutting chamber on the bottom of the mower when I changed out the blade uh, just last week. But that was the first time I really thoroughly cleaned it out um, and I've never really, other than blowing the grass off with the, with the blower, never really cleaned the mower uh, on the outside. Um, but just so you can see, these things are pretty battle hardened. I've, I've really not babied these tools at all. Uh, they, are, they run into the, the split rail fence on a regular basis. They run into my little stone uh, retaining walls. And so I've scratched them up and they've, they've really held up pretty well despite the beating that I've given them. So I've since actually bought a couple of things for my Ego tools. Uh, on the blower, for example, I have this uh, flat air nozzle uh, attachment. I think they make a flatter and wider version of this if you want something even flatter. But I do feel like it gives the blower a little bit more uh, focused air output on the bottom. It's kind of good for wet leaves or uh, you know, blowing matted grass that's accumulated along the, uh, the um, sidewalk line. And, uh, and I've also bought a third party battery, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So after three years of ownership of the mower and two years of the blower and trimmer, I'm still an Ego fan. They really have given me no reason personally uh, to, to have a problem with them as a brand. So I still confidently recommend them to my family and friends. In fact, my father has uh, the same blower now and he's got the upgraded trimmer with the uh, auto winder mechanism. And he really likes the trimmer and the blower. So um, at least in my family, we're all happy uh, with the Ego ecosystem. But let's go talk about some battery issues. We're gonna go in the garage and take a look at uh, kind of what my experience with batteries has been. All right, let's talk about batteries and blades. So first of all, the blades. Um, I just recently replaced the blade uh, on my Ego, this is for the first time. So rather than just taking it off and sharpening it and putting it back on, which was certainly an option, because these things are very easy to take off, by the way, 
uh, it actually you just turn it to loosen it counterclockwise and tighten it clockwise. Uh, a lot of mowers have the opposite, so you just be, have to be aware of that. Uh, but it was fairly easy to get the blade off and replace it. Um, this has got the uh, sharpness of a butter knife at this point. So I just bought a new blade. It was like $25. Um, I initially actually bought a blade that was listed as a high lift blade. Again, it was an Ego blade. Um, and I'll, I'll put a picture of that one right up here so you can see it. When I bought it, I thought it would provide a little more updraft, which it probably does. But that blade is specifically designed for when you're uh, bagging your grass, as it says right on the box. And it's not particularly well suited, according to the instructions, for, uh, for mulching mode. And mulching mode is how I use my mower virtually 100% of the time. So I sent that blade back and I ordered a replacement one of these, like I said, for 25 bucks. This gives me a chance I can actually sharpen this whenever I want to. It's got some nicks in it, so I can try to clean up the edges a little bit and it'll just be ready for me the next time you know, I wanna replace the blade maybe next season. So very easy for 25 bucks, just put a new blade on the, on the thing and move on. All right, let's talk about batteries. So uh, I've still got my original two, two and a half amp hour batteries, and I've got the replacement seven and a half amp hour battery for the one that went bad, which is this, this guy. This guy still does not work. I'm still planning on doing some troubleshooting. I did a video about the experience when this thing failed and how the customer service experience was. With Ego, if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a video link up here with that. But since then, I, out of curiosity, because I, I wanted to find out if these were worth buying or not, I bought this seven and a half amp hour battery. And these are anywhere from around, call it 270 to $300, depending on. And I, uh, I'll put a, a link to these in the description if you're interested in checking them out. But this is a seven and a half amp hour battery. It doesn't have kind of the, the ruggedized uh, rubber uh, housing on the edges like the Ego batteries do. So I don't think it's quite as uh, rugged in a sort of drop condition. You know, but the important thing is how does this battery perform for, for the cost savings? And the savings is about 80 to $100 versus the Ego uh, equivalent. And I think this performs really pretty comparably. I did a, a run test with no load, just continual running, and I got about 110 minutes continual runtime out of this. And again, just sort of sitting stationary over the grass, not using the mower. Just I used a clamp, you know, a woodworking clamp to hold the, the handle down. And I timed it until it ran out. And I got about 110 minutes. I get about 115 on the Ego branded battery. Um, so that, that differential is not significant. They both last a reasonable amount of time and they both last for me to do my entire lawn on my roughly quarter acre lot. Um, now, that said, I have uh, subsequently had a guy reach out to me, I had a company reach out to me, and ask if I would review their 9 amp hour battery. And that is what this one is. And notice, it's identical in size. And it's not just identical in size, it's almost identical in weight. It is less than half an ounce heavier, which I found a little bit suspicious. And again, this is marked 9.0 amp hours. As you can see that. What I found interesting is when I ran the same uh, runtime test on this as I did on, on the other two, I actually got about five minutes less runtime on this battery, which I found, again, very suspicious. So even though they sent me this battery, and I'm obviously disclosing that, I'm gonna tell you that uh, I, don't, I don't think that this is actually a nine hour, a nine amp hour battery. I think this is actually another seven and a half amp hour battery with a 9.0 amp hour label on it. And the difference in price between, if you look at these online, the difference in price on these tends to run about $30 uh, for, the, for the ones that are labeled nine amp hours versus the ones that are labeled seven and a half. Now I bought this seven and a half amp hour clone battery about a year ago, um, just shortly after I got the seven and a half amp hour battery from Ego replacement on warranty. Um, and they both, they both work fine, they've continued to work fine. Haven't had a problem with either one of them, you know, and this one runs fine too, as I said, it's just, I, I really see this as a seven and a half amp hour battery and a nine amp hour battery uh, skin. So, you know, take from that what you will. Now there, there is a reason why you might consider buying one of these aftermarket batteries, probably not the nine, the ones marked nine amp hour, at least this one um, at, for, for the reasons I just mentioned. But, you know, I would consider buying again if I had to, a seven and a half hour uh, third party battery like this one uh, because they are anywhere from 80 to $100 cheaper 
than the Ego brand. Now, one thing that you do want to consider, because this, this should factor into your decision as well, is that you get a 24-month uh, a um, warranty on the Ego battery, so full two years. Most of these that I've seen, including this one and this one, uh, these are, I think, one-year warranty. Um, so if the extra $80 to $100 is, is worth an extra year of warranty, then, then you might, might as well look at the Ego battery instead. The one big reason, as I mentioned, though, uh, aside from price, is that the Ego batteries are out of stock right now just about everywhere. Like, the Ego can't get these in and keep them in stock. You can still find these uh, seven and a half and, and nine amp hour batteries on the market uh, pretty readily on Amazon. Um, but I wouldn't pay the extra 30 bucks for the one Mark nine. I would just get the seven and a half because I don't think you're gonna get anything extra out of this. The one thing I did get with this, which was kind of cool, is that it came with this mounting bracket, which I initially had mounted on the wall. And then I thought, you know, I've got all these batteries laying around the floor of my garage. Probably not ideal. Uh, it'd be nice if I could organize them in some way. So, and I'll put a link to this if, you, if you're in a similar situation. I found this kit uh, on Amazon that had five of these brackets. I already had one that came, uh, was sent to me with this particular one. So I bought a kit with five additional ones. Gave me a bracket for all the batteries that are around. So I just, then I just bought some half inch plywood here and uh, made a little you know thing that I can remove. I got it on hooks. Uh, this allows me to take it in during the winter so I'm not subjecting these to constant freeze and thaw when I'm not even needing to use them. Uh, so I, I do plan to take this inside, just put it in the basement during the winter. So hopefully you found this two slash three year follow up uh, user experience useful. If you did, uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber and all that nonsense. So anyway, thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for coming by. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there. So but you may be wondering, how does this battery perform? Well, I've, you know, I've even spent a little more money and bought a couple extra, extra. So I've since actually bought a few, a couple, cut. So after three full years with the, with the 